Hello, my name's Lucy and today I'm going to be cooking uh, smoked salmon and scrambled eggs on buns. Uh, so a little, little reminder, what I do is um, I do cooking from start to finish so I haven't got anything out yet. Um, I've got nothing prepared, I need to get all of my ingredients out, I need to get all of my cooking equipment out um, and I also, partly for my own uh, sanity because I enjoy doing the chatting part um, but if I had to edit long videos um, I think this would become less fun for me so um, I just do things from start to finish uh, no editing no cuts so uh, you get an idea a good idea of how exactly how long things take to cook because um, you're watching me in real time uh, as I as I witter on uh, and fill the time um, and it was going to be uh, smoked salmon and scrambled eggs on uh, sesame seed bagels, which is how I like to have them, but I went and looked and uh, the bagels expired last week, so they're now in the bin. Um, but I do have some of those uh, ready-bake buns that you get in a half-bake that you have in a packet that you have to open up and cook in the oven to finish off. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, and uh, let's get started, shall we? Right, apron. I do need to do. I'm also thinking about getting a tripod because the thing I've got I've got the camera currently to get it to the right height balanced on something but it only looks straight out it doesn't look down which makes it very hard to see what I'm doing on my cooking surface or look into the pan and so a tripod that I can tilt would help with that it would only be a cheap one but that's what I'm probably going to do. Right uh, things that I need for cooking I need my buns I need in the fridge, eggs, smoked salmon, margarine. margarine. I've always just called this margarine. It's some class bread. It's not called margarine. Margarine is something completely different that they don't really sell. Uh, but yes, so margarine, smoked salmon, and eggs, which I keep in the fridge because uh, otherwise I because basically there's a handy place in the fridge for eggs on the sh on the on the top door shelf, um, and if I kept them like in a cupboard or something, I would drop things on them or drop them out the cupboard or break them. Um, and I have duck eggs because I really like duck eggs, so that's going to be very nice. Um, I'm also going to need butter, which butter I don't keep in the fridge, but I keep in a butter dish in the cupboard, which means that it's still very, very hard in winter, and at this time of year it's mm, a little bit soft. Right, and then the equipment I need, I'm going to need a plate to eat it off with in the end, a bowl to scramble the eggs in, frying pan to, to make the scrambled eggs in, a fork, knives, I'm also going to need a tray, Buns on tray in oven cook out, cut them in half, butter them, put on the smoked salmon, eggs, scramble with salt and pepper. Right, okay, that's everything. Um, I'm just going to flip the oven on straight away uh, because none of the prep is going to take very long. Uh, the ready baked buns, I've got a fancy version because um, when I last went to the supermarket to buy these, they were out of the um, Tesco brand ones. Uh, so I bought Paul Hollywood Multi Seed, which um, let's see how they are. Um, I, I don't think you need to spend, um, normally spend money to buy luxury ones of these. Right, so I think since that's everything, we're going to move you down here. There we go. Let's open it up. And since I haven't eaten yet today and I'm quite hungry, it's going to be, I think I'm going to do all four buns uh, rather than just two. So they're quite, they're quite small buns as well. They're not very, they're not very tall. So uh, even cutting them in half, they're not going to have a massive amount. Right. Okay, and then the instructions for these are 10 minutes at 220 degrees or 200 fan, gas mark 7. And it says 8 to 10 minutes. And so I'm going to do 9 minutes at 220. And then 
I'm just going to let the oven heat up. And it does also say on here, which is why you should also read the packet, um, for crisper crust, lightly sprinkle with water before baking. So I'm going to take these over to the sink and just flick a little bit of water over them. Okay, so buns are nice and watered, ready to go into the oven. Um, I'm not going to start cooking the eggs until the buns have come out of the oven, uh, because there is absolutely no need to, uh, to because uh, the buns will take 10 minutes to cook, and scrambled eggs, I like my scrambled eggs very runny. Uh, which means it only takes about two minutes um, and obviously after the buns come out of the oven I've got to butter them, I've got to put the salmon on so I'm just going to get things prepared but not actually start cooking so nice wedge of butter in the pan for the eggs and, the the way. and then I'm going to use two eggs because I've got a reasonable amount of bread so crack egg into there. Crack egg. Because I've got one egg left, so I've got to work out some recipe that uh, requires just one egg. Right, um, so that can go back in the fridge. Um, and the oven's going to take two minutes to heat up, so I'll now start whisking the eggs. And you can add milk if you uh, want, want to bulk it out any, or you want to do it, but I, 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 like, I like a nice, uh, nice thick scrambled egg, um, and also these are duck eggs, so they're, so they're a bit bigger than chicken's eggs, so two of them should do, uh, do quite nicely, I think. So whisk that up, um, also add some salt and pepper. Um, and because I'm having this with the salmon, then I, I want the salmon to be the dominant flavour. I'm not going to season them with anything else. Um, but if you're having just like scrambled eggs on toast or something, um, as well as having them with ketchup, which um, is what my family always did, you can have them with, say, uh, paprika. Paprika is a good one. A little, little sprinkle of cayenne pepper or chilli flakes if you like it hot. Um, or just like anything really. I've got um, various spice mixes. Um, I've got one that's called Moroccan Spice Mix, which uh, I don't know if it's ever actually been anywhere near Morocco. Um, but uh, that's, a, that's a nice war warming one that I can, I, I like putting in scrambled eggs as well, but like I say. Now I've just got the eggs ready. And I'll give them another, and I've got them all whisked up. Um, and I'll give them another whisk when we come to uh, having to actually put them in the pan because uh, they'll, they, they do sort of get less mixed as you leave them. Oven's still waiting. Uh, the other thing I'll get out is, again as a cooling rack, uh, I'm just going to use the grill pan. So I'll put that on the, the back of the stove top ready. Um, and I'll open up the smoked salmon ready as well. Which it always is this weird thing. Smoked salmon always has the peel here label. But I've never found it very particularly peelable. It doesn't... There's not a gap. You can't get your fingers in it. Come on. Attack it with a knife instead. There we go. So it's like salmon ready to go. And I can also, oh, I can also get my juice ready to go. Get the glass. Juice is in the fridge. It's mango juice from concentrate. I like fresh juice, but um, with everything in the world right now, um, I'm going to the shops less often, so I've bought some concentrate juice to pop in so I can always... Because I, 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 uh, I don't like tea or coffee, uh, and I can't be bothered with um, 
Coke or Dr Pepper or things, they leave my mouth feeling sticky. So I basically I drink water, I drink fruit juice. Um, and normally I drink fresh, um, but I've now drunk more than fresh, so I'm putting the, uh, putting the long lives into the fridge. Um, and just... I'm not going to do anything right now, I'm just waiting for that to heat up. Um, with the smokes, that, if I do them on the bagels, which I normally do, obviously the bagels don't go in the oven, the bagels go under the grill. And they take slightly less longer than the uh, nine minutes I've got this set for. Um, and I really should have uh, started heating the oven up when I started talking to you, but I forgot. Um, so, I've got to wait a bit. And you can also tell how the oven's getting on by turning it down and seeing, how, and seeing when the light goes off. And it's gone off at about 180. So it shouldn't be long now, so get heated up. And like I said, I've got the knife ready to cut them in half and the uh, butter ready to butter them. And I will pop them in as soon as that light as soon as that light goes off. Which I wish it made more of a noise, it goes kind of clunk. So I'm just listening out for the clunk. But uh, yeah, so otherwise I've been having a very nice day. I've played a little bit of, a bit of Pokemon Snap. I like Pokemon Snap. It's um it's very soothing. Um just trying to trying to get uh, the best angles on the Pokemon. Although all the Pokemon I played Pokemon Red quite a lot um, when I was a teenager, and never and, and watched the Pokemon cartoon, but never got into any of the other like like it must have been like after the first or second series and the things because I never got into any Pokemon other than the first 151. I didn't watch any play any of the other generations. I didn't I don't recognise them as cartoons. So apart from occasionally seeing other people uh, do YouTube videos about them, I have not. I don't know anything about like half the Pokemon because there's about 200 Pokemon in Pokemon Snap um, and I recognise maybe 50 of them <laughs> um, but the new ones are cute as well Come on. now I'm going do I want to add milk and the thing is I also don't have very much milk either um, so I'm going to need to make a supermarket trip probably on Monday anyway The thing about the oven is because it gets up to temperature and then obviously it stops heating up and then it starts cooling down so you'll uh, during the cooking process it'll go up to temperature and down several times hmm. any more kitchen things i can think about or talk about oh no the light's gone right here we go so into the oven top shelf slightly damp buns and start and that's nine minutes uh, and on at the last minute I'll put that pan on uh, but until then uh, we're just waiting so I remembered what I said last time and I did bring my poetry book so now I'm going to just flick through and try and find one of the ones that I like ah Philip Larkin days what are days for days are where we live they come, they wake us, time and time over. They are to be happy in. Where can we live but days? Ah, solving that question brings the priest and the doctor in their long coats, running over the fields. See, as I do like poetry, and I think actually a way to develop appreciation for poetry is you do read it out loud. Um, so when I encounter a new poem, I'll read it in my head first to sort of see how it goes, and I'll read it out loud to see how that makes it sound, um, and then I might come back and read it again in my head afterwards. And just I find that gives me sort of a really strong feeling for for, for its meaning for, and for how it makes me feels makes me feel. Um, so I really like poetry, um, and it can be wearing to try and read lots of it at once. So um, just reading a little bit at a time um, is quite nice. I, I bought one of those book, uh, poem a day books um, and 
I, I'm bad. Like I can, I can get into routines, but then if um, if I'm running, I always run late in the mornings, um, and so I don't have time. And then I go to bed late, and I'm like, oh, I'm tired. I can't look at it properly. Um, so I didn't manage to keep up with that, which is a shame. But um, I do. I'm glad I have the book because it's got some good poems in it. And every so often, I'll just dip into it and read one or two. Okay, so, so and that particular poem, Days Blue Locket, I basically just open the book um, at a random place, flip through. The book in particular is the Puffin Book of Classic Verse, uh, which is an excellent book. I really like this book. Um, I've had it since, I've given it when I was a kid, and so it's very good because it's very child-friendly um, in the sense that uh, none of the language is too complicated and the poems, a lot of them are funny and they're set into nice categories, and so they just it just feels very accessible. So I think I got given this when I was a child. Um, and I didn't read it much then, um, but then I read it uh, more as an adult and very much appreciated that I had it. Um, and like I say, um, I do have poems, because I have read this, and I, there are poems in here that I like, but what I'm currently doing is just flicking through, picking a page, and then scanning until I see one that sounds interesting. So... No. Oh, here's a good one. In Zandu did Kubla Khan, a stately pleasure dome decree, where Alf the sacred river ran, through caverns measureless to man, down to a sunless sea. So twice five miles of fertile ground, with walls and towers were girdled round, and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills, where blossomed many an incense-bearing tree. And here were forests ancient as the hills, enfolding sunny spots of greenery. But oh, that deep romantic chasm which slated, slanted down the green hill athwart a seared from cover, a savage place, as holy and enchanted, as air beneath a waning moon was haunted by woman wailing for her demon lover. And from this chasm, with ceaseless turmoil seething, as if this earth in fast thick pants were breathing, a mighty fountain momently was forced, amid whose swift half intermitted burst, huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail, or chaffy grain beneath the thresher's flail. And mid these dancing rocks at once and ever, it flung up momently the sacred river, five miles meandering with mazy motion, through wood and dale the sacred river ran, then reached the caverns measureless to man, and sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean. And mid this tumult, tumult Kubla heard from far, ancestral voices prophesying war. The shadow of the dome of pleasure floated midway on the waves. Where was heard the mingled measure from the fountain and the caves? It was a miracle of rare device, a sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice, a damsel with a dulcimer, in a vision once I saw, it was an Abyssinian maid, and on her dulcimer she played, singing of Mount Abora. Could I revive within me her symphony and song? So such a deep delight t'would win me, that with music loud and long. I would build that dome in air, that sunny dome, those caves of ice, and all who heard should see them there, and all should cry, beware, beware, his flashing eyes, his floating hair, Weave a circle round him thrice, and close your eyes with holy dread, for he on honey dew hath fed, and drunk the milk of paradise. That's of course Kubla Khan by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, um, and just it's uh, such a good one to read because it plays with sounds. With the I like rhyming poems generally, but just the the things through caverns measureless to man, um, and where blossomed an incense bearing tree, just the way the language sort of rattles onwards. It's lovely to say. It's great fun, and I don't think you get that effect just from reading it quietly. You have to sort of hear it and feel the rhythm. So, uh, yes, that, that was... Uh, that's a longer poem as well. I mean, not very long. It's only, it's only two pages on here, but... Uh, which it was of course meant to be oh, this is now random poetry trivia that um either anyone who knows about poetry already knows and then people who don't know about poetry don't care about but um Simon Taylor Coleridge was going to uh, woke up from a dream with this in his head started writing someone knocked on the door to, to talk to him about um something boring and ordinary things and by the time the conversation was finished um he couldn't remember the rest of it so he only had this bit of the poem he couldn't uh, capture the rest of the dream again But, uh, yes, 
So and this is one of the poems where I can recite up to, I can recite basically the first stanza. I can get through um, In Zandu did Kubla Khan down to a sunless sea. Uh, that's as far as I get. Let's see if I can find now a short one. Ah, here we are, William Blake. This is classic poetry. There is there is more modern stuff and stuff that's not by just white men. Um, although this is, it's a very white book and it's uh, a lot more male than female and a lot, I mean, because it's for get classic verse and then for children. So it's for people that you've at least half heard of. So it's a lot of the names that you would, that you would already know. But anyway, um, an extract from Auguries of Innocence by William Blake. To see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. So yes, that's a nice one. It's just, so we're gonna pop on here and we're, we're down to one minute 27. So I'm just gonna start heating up the pan on the lowest possible heat and knock on my extractor fan on low as well. Um, and I shan't read any more because I don't want to be in the middle of something when I try, when I'm trying to do something, but I'm going to start heating up those. I'm going to pull out the buns, let them cool for two minutes, uh, slice butter, smoke salmon, scrambled eggs. And I just, I say that because that's, uh, I like to think, because I see cooking as a series of steps, I like to say the steps to myself as I go. So as I'm going along, I'm always thinking, right, that's the next step, and then the steps after that, and this, and just thinking step, 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 and constantly being sort of pleased when I get to each step. Give that a quick stir. We're down to 31 minutes. 31 minutes, 31 seconds. 31 minutes, they'd be, uh, they'd be that of charcoal. I, I very much do, do enjoy reading out reading out poetry, so I'm probably going to do more of that because it also gives me an excuse to look at poetry as well, which is quite nice. And the beeper goes. Off. Out of the oven. Get nice and brown. Very hot. Onto the cooling rack. Tray in the sink. And since there wasn't any oil or anything, it's not going to be very. Uh, just let that go for two minutes now. Since there wasn't any oil, uh, the tray is not going to be hard to wash. And I could wash it now, I suppose, but uh, it will be a brush, so I'm going to leave it. Instead, I'm going to bring over, bring over the entire tray because I'm going to use the plate to do the uh, buttering rather than dirty chopping board. I'm just going to put the drink out of the way so I don't knock it over. Because I would otherwise. And the buns do cool down very, very quickly. Um, they don't keep their heat long, so they're going to be nice and cool in just a minute. Uh, I could, then I could prep them. to sit in silence sometimes. That's the thing also, I don't, um, I'm, I'm very introverted, I don't need much company. So the first time that I did th these videos, I was just chatting constantly and that was because I hadn't had anyone to talk to for a while, because uh, I live alone uh, and for plague related reasons I'm not going out so I basically phone my various members of family uh, once a week. Um, so and I don't otherwise talk to people much, so I was like I got all this talking stored up. So I was just nattering constantly, telling anecdotes as as I did the cooking. Um, but now that I've done that, I'm sort of like 
I feel like I've done enough talking. Like, like that, what, that one video of talking for sort of 40 minutes was sort of it. And I'm now like, well, that's me, that's me done for the next two weeks. Don't, don't feel the need to do much more talking. Right. So there we go. So now they're cool enough to handle just about. So cut the open. These are, oh, these ones are very, they're very crisp. They have gotten nice and crispy. But they are very, very small and very low. So like, I'm glad I did still, oof. I haven't. It hasn't cut very neatly. I mean, I've got a nice serrated knife. It's, it's very rough on the inside. I suppose I could have used actual butter, but that seems a bit uh, a bit unnecessary. Given I'm going to cook the eggs in the butter. So that's one butter done. Is if I do, oh that one cut, that one cut much more neatly. I must have just done it. Must have done it better. Um, and the thing is, if I do uh, do this, and then I end up going, oh, actually I'm uh, I'm full. I can always uh, wrap it in cling film um, and put it in the fridge and have it uh, have it as uh, an early lunch tomorrow instead. There we go. That's number two. Bun number three. And I go like, and I'm putting margarine on, even though I've got like the eggs and the salmon, because it just it makes it, it makes the bread moister. It doesn't. I mean, these look plenty moist, but just you just you have sandwiches with margarine. This is a type of sandwich. That's just the way it works. <laughs> and yeah, as I said, that they cool very quickly. Like the first one was still a bit hot when I held it. This one now, this is this is merely just warm and is. Um, Perfectly, com perfectly comfortable to uh, sort of touch. Right, that's done. So that one goes on the getting ready to go washing up pile. this salmon because it's uh, coming up to the date and it doesn't uh, store very well once you've opened it so flat on there flat on there flat on there and yeah just tearing it into rough large pieces the problem with cooking with smoked salmon is just end up eating all of it first and I'll sprinkle that last bit that last little bit over the top. So now it's time for the uh, eggs. So I'm just going to turn the heat up to get the butter bubbling. Give that one more quick whisk with the fork. And now that the butter's bubbling, just pour in. It's all of it in, all of it in, all of it in, all of it in. And the important thing with uh, scrambled eggs is basically just to keep it. You can make scrambled eggs in microwave, by the way, which my parents do, do when they're on holiday places without proper oven. Um, but just keep it moving. And like I say, I like mine very runny, so I just want it to get just solid and also to keep it moving just constantly. Just constantly moving. And there is like a last little dribble left in the pan, so I'm just going to get that out, 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 out. And I could run that. And the thing is, even just running the um, pan over to the, uh, even, sorry, even just running the barley over to the sink is enough. And like that, that's it now. That was it. Just, that's it. The barest, the barest hint. And obviously, it keeps. Even if you take the pan off the heat, it keeps cooking. So you need to take it and get it quickly onto the buns. And we put salt and pepper in there. Um, and that was enough pepper, I think. But I'm probably gonna. Just uh, add a few more sprinkles of salt. Right, that's done. And like I say, you don't put uh, you don't put pans in the sink. You don't put the rest of the stuff in the sink, though. So there we go. 
So, sink. I always fill things with water when I put them in the sink to, um, basically because it's easy to get wet, um, wet food off them dry. So if you keep them, keep them damp, they're easier to wash up. So that way and this way, you're leaving your pan cool. I obviously don't leave it on the hob that's just been on. And I'm going to give it like a final sprinkle of salt. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Last bits of smoked salmon in my mouth or over the top. I'll give my fingers a quick wipe um, because uh, the salmon's oily, but I'm going to eat this with my hands so they can wash them. Oh, yes, I did wash my hands before starting to cook as well. Uh, because um, before I start cooking and before I put the camera on, the, the thing I do is do the washing up from last night, which means obviously um, my hands are all pre-washed when I come to start cooking. Right, so there's my meal. Oh, very nice. So that's going to, I'm going to enjoy that. Um, and I'll probably again do a quick five minutes to say how I found it, although this isn't a new thing. I've, uh, I've eaten this many times before, although not on these, not on these buns. Um, but I'll still do a quick summary of it after I finished eating. So uh, bon appetit. So I've now eaten my meal. Um, it was very, very tasty. I'd got the scrambled eggs just right, just how I like them. Uh, went well with the salmon and the wholemeal buns, uh, multi-seed buns, were actually, they went really, really well. Um, they had toasted sesame seeds on them, some of them as well, which was good because that's the part of the sesame seed bagels that I usually have that I like. Um, but even beyond that, they were just the right sort of crispy on the outside um, and mm, yum, yum, yum really really good um and it turns out i wasn't that hungry i ate three of them uh, i couldn't manage the fourth so that's wrapped in cling film ready for tomorrow morning and uh for afters i had another one of those blueberry muffins and i think they've uh, improved with time um i really enjoyed it it's still nice and moist the icing goes really well still uh so yeah i had a very tasty tasty meal uh and that was great okay Bye-bye now.